Well, hello there and good day. Thank you for joining me. I am Frost PDP, and today we're playing Brigandine Grand Edition, and in reality I'm really teaching you Brigandine Grand Edition because today we're going to talk as new Omechia, we're going to go through the organized phase. I've skipped all the story elements I could, so if you're playing this game and you're brand new to this game or you're learning this game for the sake of being good at Renarsia when that comes out in June, well, let me tell you something. The new Brigandine game is going to be awesome. I have faith in it. Good to know how to play Brigandine because they've said the story isn't relevant, but the gameplay sure is. So let's start by looking at our castle. It's called the Castle of Calmary. And as you can see, we're the red flagged nation. We've got five castles. We have an alliance with greens, so we're not bothering with the border with them. I'm going to shorthand as much stuff as I can in order to try to make it easy for you to understand. If you're familiar with my channel, if you've seen my other gameplay and my let's plays, you'll pick up quickly. Um, if you want to see story elements, you can check out Brass TV Trigger or Papa Zanara's channel. They both have story elements far more than I do. Uh, so, you click on a castle, and you'll bring up this little menu that says Organize, Summon, Move, Quest, Wait, Status. Um, in a perfect world, maybe I'll be able to edit some additional stuff into this, but in the meantime, Organize is where you go to just kind of look at your troops, equip them, get gear, uh, use items, all that sort of stuff. Summon is where you go to summon monsters to reinforce your armies. Move it lets you move your troops around, we'll be looking at that later. Quest sends your knights off on a quest. If you have knights that don't have troops, they're good for questing. That gets you random items or stat bonuses, whatever. Wait will just cancel any orders you already have for them. And status just lets you look at the status of your troops. Also, by the way, if you hit the start button when you're not focused on a castle, it'll bring up the execute button, which lets you execute the turn order, we're not going to do that yet, it lets you bring up the domain map, which is this map here, which we looked at earlier, it lets you save the game, which is sort of important, it lets you look at options, location, it gives you a location of where all your knights are, very quick overhead, so you can check. Now this is a grand strategy and a tactical strategy RPG. What that means is it's almost two different games in one. The grand strategy elements are the stuff we're looking at right now. Tactical elements and stuff in combat, and so they deserve separate videos, they deserve separate guides. No big deal, right? So let's hit organize and let's look through our troops. You've got order, class, equip, item, name, delete. Delete kills a monster, that's why it's a halo. We don't usually do this. Name, you can rename a monster. We might look at that a little bit, but it's not that important for fun. Item gives monsters items, usually consumables. Equip equips a piece of gear to a unit, either a monster or a knight. I know if you're playing Legend of Forcina, the first version of Bring Team, that might not apply to all certain things. But we're playing Grand Edition here, because that's, in my opinion, the best Bring Team that's out so far. Class lets you look at the class of a monster or a knight. The order is where it starts. This is an army. This is Lance's army. The leader is on the left. The leader is called a Rune Knight. Rune Knights are humans that have the ability to control monsters. Monsters are your basic units. They're the things that you fight using. So, when I say, you know, the squad belongs to Lance, this is Lance's team, whatever, that means it's Lance's army, and he can have up to six monsters. With a caveat. You see that little number to the bottom of where this quill is floating? Right here, going back and forth? That number is called Rune Power. You can also see it when you hit triangle on a unit's thing, and a rune knight will have a rune power. Rune power is kind of like a, a budget. You can only have so much rune power, and it's on the top right as well, so keep that in mind. Monsters each cost rune power. For example, this dragon here costs 115 rune power to have in your army. It's a very powerful monster, it's level 20, but it costs 115 to have in your army. You don't start off with a lot of very strong monsters, by the way. I accidentally hit the uh, button to go into your stockpile here. It's just located off screen. And as you see, you start with a lot of knights in your capital with a lot of different monsters. Uh, so far, so good, right? Seems pretty standard if you've played any kind of strategy RPG before. When you go into combat, you can bring only three armies into a battle with you. Meaning, I like to think of things in terms of groups of three. And I like to think of third. Three, in terms of where I need to fortify. 
So if I'm looking at my domain map and I see that, well, I have an alliance with the green country, but I'm at war technically with everyone else, right? And that's just how breaking in is. It's a war game. So I'm at war with purple, who is huge and is a threat, and I'm at war with blue, who is also huge and is a threat. I know I need to stop up this castle here to the north. It's called Alaran. It's called Go Rule. It's adjacent to Alaran. I call it the Alaran Line, just because when you look at it from the domain perspective, it's a line. If you're at this castle, you can go north to this castle, and north to that castle, and northeast to that castle. It's one big line that you fight over. And so the Alaran line is an easy place for a beginner to learn how to play the game. The AI isn't that likely to send a powerful army to defend against you. So I'm not saying they won't. I'm saying they don't always, especially in beginner mode. Uh, so you can usually put a pretty strong army here and go north. You can also put a really strong army here and block the two attack routes that purple has on you. Remember, even if they have two castles next to you, they can only send three knights in combat. So, just thinking about it logistically, you have two places you need to defend, or three places you can attack. You can attack here, here, or here without breaking your alliance, obviously. We're not going to consider alliance breaking for this campaign just because it's a beginner campaign. Uh, so, I would put my knights... I put three knights here, three knights here, and three more knights here. But I'm thinking in terms of an attack team, an attack team, and a defense team. That's the trick. Because I'm going to attack here, and I'm going to attack here over time. And you'll notice, by the way, that if you attack here and you can hold here, you can attack here relatively easy. But focus on the Alaran line first. Get up to here. Expand your kingdom a bit, get some more rune power, uh, rune, what is it, mana? Mana, per turn, I'm sorry. I mixed terms up, so, what is mana? Well, if I click this button correctly, each castle has what's called a mana yield, it's in your bottom right hand corner. And mana yield is how much mana you get per turn, per year, whatever it is, per month, I forget. Uh, to go into summoning creatures. Let's talk about summoning. Each castle can summon different creatures. They all start off at level 1. If you're playing cross mod like I usually play, you can summon some tier 2 creatures. But each castle has different stuff they can summon. So where your knights are determines where you can summon certain monsters. And each monster is good at different things. Uh, King of Scorpions are 100 mana, they're pretty cheap. They have very few hit points, they have pretty good uh, defense. They can poison things. 33% chance to poison is pretty good, actually. But that's about it, right? They're not that great. Centaurs are a little more expensive. They've got a range of 2 on their Hunter Shot, their Green Elemental. They cost a little more mana to have in your army, though. They cost a little more room power. So this thing's room cost is 20. This thing's room cost is 35. Which is a better unit? Depends on your situation. I generally value centaurs more. When you level them up into level 10 high centaurs, they're really powerful. I find they're more powerful than scorpions are. But then again, you have units like unicorns, which cost 40 room power to have, but 120 mana, 220 mana, I'm sorry, to summon. It's a pretty credible amount. And they can heal. Now they can only heal as much mana as they have. So if it's let's say 140 MP, uh, 65 times 2 is 130, so they can heal twice in a battle, but that's important, right? And as they level up, they get more mana, they can cast heal more often, they heal for more HP. Golems are defensive units, they don't have any intelligence, so they're very weak against magic, but they're not expensive to have in your army, and they have a lot of hit points, and they have a lot of defense. So they can take a beating. They're good physical blockers. Griffins, well, they fly, they're high sky, they drop claw, they drop scratch, which is good against land units. Dragons, on the other hand, cost 75 room cost to have in your army. They have 630 hit points, decent amount of defense, a huge attack, and this acid breath attack has a hex of three. What it does is it's a line, and you'll see more of it when I, you actually get to see battles. But it's a very powerful defensive or offensive tool. 
that they can use typically twice when you start off. Again, Cross Knot has different numbers, but... So if you go back and you look at how most shoots in campaign as Norgard, you'll be like, wow, all these numbers don't add up. Don't worry about that. So what are some first recommended moves as Nuo Mekia, which is usually the first recommended country? Let's go through. I'm going to build one really strong squad right now. I'm just going to stack Lance up. Okay, I'm not going to stack him that crazy. And I'm short. Uh, can I fit a... Nope. But I can maybe fit a Drake and Pixie. So this is giving Lance a pretty nice little helper unit here. Some physical blockers. Some... A unit that can... Pixies cast Protect, it's very useful, Harden, rather, in this translation. And Mantrax can stun a unit, or paralyze a unit. So, that's pretty good. I'm also going to give Lance a powerful knight to work with, in Chariots, who's level 19. It's actually lower in Crossbow, by the way, He's got a room at a cap of 284. Now, by the way, Lance is level 1 when you start the game. He's what you would call a project knight. He or any other knight that's low level, as you level up, there's a certain random factor to what you get per level. But if you can level Lance up and get him an early kill quick, so that he can have two uh, bolts stored up, instead of a healing bolt in terms of mana for magic points, uh, you have yourself a really dangerous guy. And he gets the county of longer as he's going I like Cole as well. I'm going to show you a trick with Cole. Assuming you're right level 16. So you can see how I've made three really powerful squads right here. Lance is still pretty weak, I know, but he's useful. Jerrians is very powerful at melee, but he's not going to be frontlining anyone. He's got two dragons to do a lot of that for him. And then you've got Cole, who's got like this stone golem, which is powerful. Weaver and this Nightmare, which has Dimension, which is an awesome spell. Uh, it's very limited range in this game, but in the cross mod, it's a fantastic spell. I've got a lot of ranged units. A uh, little wolf guy's pretty easy to do. In fact, I could fit the wolf guy up here and actually summon a healer. So I'll show you how to summon real quick. You just go down to the you want. You can summon if you have the mana for it again. Alright. And it gets a certain amount of random HP when it's generated. HP 353, MP, whatever. So this is almost like my healer army. Although Lance has healing as well. I'm going to show you something interesting when it comes to class and units. Cole is a level 16 pistol. He's a bishop, but that means that he's a priest, he heals people, pretty easy like But, when you have that expert tag, that means you can change your class and not lose your abilities. So bishop is a second tier because he's level 10 or above. So that means he's got healing word, he's got divine ray, he's got all these spells, right? I'm going to make Cole into a pyromancer, which is a basic fire mage. You can see that it adds flame and genoflame. Flame is a single target spell, it's got a range of 3, it deals with fire damage. Geno Flame is an area of effect fire spell that deals area of effect damage. He also gets Excel and Fury, which are nice little useful spells. So, I know it says I can change him up. That up just means he can be a tier 2 creature, that's not the same as being a Pyromancer. If you get 5 levels in the thing, each level will be a star. I can show you what stars look like here. Oh, he's already next to us. Next to us, plus class. Forget some of these things. Melagon's level 20. Carlotta's also as a, so I can start her as a cleric for two levels, and she'll still have a lot of frost spells from Enchantress class, but now she has heal and hallow from cleric. Jerrion, so I can make him level and Iron Man for four of us. I could make him a priest. It would severely neuter him. I prefer to get him to level 20, get him to make three, just Shogun. And then he's like a beast. Um, could be this. 
Do I have equipment? I have no equipment. Jerry has a Koketsu. It's just an attack. It makes it a little better on attack. There are other swords out there that are better. Like, Cole has a Holy Amulet who resists Holy stuff. I'm actually going to take the Holy Amulet off Cole because he's going to eventually switch back to the uh, Holy class. I'm going to give it to Melagon who's very vulnerable against Holy. Summon a dragon. Centaur and a scorpion for Melodons. Even though I don't really need it, I'm just gonna go to organize. We summon things that go to this little bin here. I showed it to you earlier, but I didn't put it out. So. Melagon has very little room power, so I call it room cap a lot of times. Melagon is a pretty powerful army. He's strong in his own right. He can fit another scorpion. Like that. I'm gonna move Melagon. I'm gonna hit the square button to highlight him. That makes him a movable guy. I'm gonna move him to Camelcourt. I'm gonna move Lance Cherry Control up to the Alaron line. I'm gonna look at Alaron, or rather Castle Golu, which is the start of the Alaron line. Let me see this Gilsa's guy here. He's pretty cool. He's got a lot of powerful spells. He's got that one star because he's level 11. So he's got one level in Elementalist. I could make him a priest, but I'd rather get an Elementalist. Miguel is level 2. She's an archer. She'd be a project knight. She's got room power of 163, which is pretty low. But at level 2, she can level up a lot and gain a lot of stats. Ophelia is level 9, expert cleric. Kind of outclassed by for a lot of animals. But, what you see here is you see a lot of units. I'm going to build Gilsus a good army. What's that going to look like? It's going to look like a lot of units. At 25, I can't summon anything anyway. So I'm going to move Gilsus down to Camel Ford. And I'm going to build a third really solid armor. Or at least something similar. Uh, Adelicia is a very good character. She's a lancer. She's got a throw spear. Uh, she doesn't have throw spear and cross mob, which is actually uh, sad, but I don't think that's why. I'm going to keep this angel with her. Angels have healed. Angels level up to be very powerful. I'm going to give her the two ghouls as little blocker units. That's fine. So Batterkiss has no army, no troops. He's really kind of useless. He's just sitting there. I'm going to send him on a quest. Again, square to highlight. He's going to go on a quest. When he'll be back, nobody knows. When he comes back, he might come back wounded, he might not. When he comes back, I'm going to send all my un troop knights out on a quest. I'm also going to send Miguel out on a quest. When he comes back, he will always go back to the castle where you're commanding officers. So in my case, Lance. Miguel can go away. Ophelia can stay here. You know what? I'm going to move Ophelia down to Camel Fort as well. Now when I go to location, it's going to show me this. And my golden rule for this, for every spot you need to defend, do you have three knights? If you don't have three knights, you're either shorthanded or you're doing something wrong. Which is okay, you do things wrong all the time. This is a grand strategy game. Mistakes get made. Be prepared to limit yourself from mistakes. But anyway, Lance, Gary, and Cole, all going to go with fun. Camel Ford, someone, if it's... White text, they're already there. Green text are gonna move there. Move, wait, move, wait, 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 wait. So this guy waiting at Fazer move for He's got some troops to him, he's just kinda sitting there. And again, I don't have to guard my southern border because I have an alliance with Carlin. With that in mind, Carlin is green. I'm gonna move him up here too, because I'm gonna be rearranging a lot of troops up here. And I want to eventually have two armies that I can attack with. One I can attack here. One I can attack here. If I can take both of these, then I can attack this without having to worry about defending this. Since it's only got two adjacencies. So 
So if you look at the domain map, you can see how there's a road that leads from here to here to here, and it's a little triangle. So purple can attack here, purple can attack here, and I can attack both of purples. Also, blue can attack purple, and might win, and might take this and be a new border. That's fine, I don't mind. That's why Leonia is a relatively easy country, at least in my opinion, because you've only got two borders you have to attack. Whereas Norgard, which is the dark blue, has one, two, three, four borders to defend, which is way harder. Carleon has one, Omekia has two, and there's only two for Escalio with the yellow, but to expand, then you have to defend three. And you have, even if you expand here, you still have one, two, three, you have to defend. So you're a little fit, is what I'm saying. You wind up fit. Here, you can expand two castles without having to change your defense at all, really. And that's about it. So this is some organization and first steps for Duo Mac. Yeah, let me know if you enjoyed this video. If you dig what I'm doing, please hit the like, share, subscribe, friend, follow, whatever buttons. Really just help the channel grow. It lets me know you're watching so I can keep making more of it. I really do appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And as always on this channel, lots of pods. Oh, I forgot to show you how to finish. You hit execute. It'll say finally organized. You hit yes, and it's done. Then you go to the attack phase, which we'll talk about later. That's always on this channel. Love hot.